answer today are, what is Apache Cordova? Number two, like why should we use it, when should we use it? And number three is how we can use leverage Visual Studio to kind of make that development experience awesome for Cordova. Yeah, um, I think many of you have probably seen us yesterday. Um, we're at Microsoft are trying to do a whole bunch of things, and one of the main things we're trying these days is that we are hiring people like Jason and me. Uh, we are both open source engineers, meaning that we spend most of our time actually not presenting in various locations, but we work on open source software, uh, whatever that might be. We spend most of our time on GitHub releasing code that improves anything um, out there, which we think is pretty cool. Um, and in detail, we do that with a very specific goal. We try to improve the workflow developers have. So the code we write is not necessarily for the end consumer, but it's specifically for the developers. So for instance, if we hear things like, hey, when I go to open up a data center location in the Middle East region, it's people like us to go and talk to Azure to then open up a node in Qatar, which we have done three years ago. Um, so speeds here are now dramatically better, right? So that's kind of the stuff we try to do where we talk to developers and then take that information, take it to engineering, and try to work that into actual engineering work. Cool. So now you're developing um, kind of the next app. So what platform are you going to target? Are you going to go for iOS, Android, Windows, Windows Phone? So um, like when you write these apps, you have to write them in the native language that they are in, like Swift or Java or C Sharp. Um, so it, it creates kind of this huge development cycle where you need to learn these tools as well as ship it on these exact platforms. So that's kind of where Apache Cordova comes in. So the goals of Apache Cordova is 100% shared code. So you write all your tooling in um, web frameworks. So you write in HTML, CS, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and in that scenario, you get 100% shared code. So that's kind of the goal of Apache Cordova. So with this code, it's completely free. So Apache Cordova is, as I said, it's an Apache project. So it's completely open source, you can use it. Um, and so this, some of these are examples of uh, apps that are written. So we have Halo Waypoint. Uh, so I have to show that first since we're from Microsoft. So Halo Waypoint is a companion app for Halo. So you kind of see um, like your Halo gamer score, you're, you can talk and buy, like see your status in the game. And it's all on all platforms. So it's on Apple, iOS, and Windows Phone. Next up, we have Wikipedia Mobile. So this is a natively installed app on all the three platforms, and it's written in PhoneGap, which uh, you may have heard is kind of, there's PhoneGap and there's Cordova. The difference between the two is PhoneGap's really just a flavor of Cordova. So it's similar to kind of Arch Linux or Ubuntu to that of Linux. So in this case, like Linux and Cordova would be kind of equivalent, and then the flavors are Arch Linux, Ubuntu, or PhoneGap. Uh, next up, we kind of have BBC Olympics. So they kind of, they, writ, they wrote their app in Cordova. And then next up is uh, IGN, and then MadCAD. So MadCAD is, uh, we just had to kind of name drop them because it's actually a project that Felix and I worked on recently. So it's a company based out in Washington, DC. And what we kind of did with them is uh, built out this Cordova app that really um, shows their data. So it just shows their data, shows their maps. So if you move your, your location on the map, um, it'll also populate this, their database with a bunch of uh, building codes that they had. So you kind of see that the theme of all the apps that we're showing today is that they're all kind of webby. So that's kind of the goal of um, Cordova, is that since you're writing this in HTML, JavaScript, or CSS, all your kind of UI looks really webby, and you kind of lose that native feel. Uh, so if you think of a pipeline or a kind of a spectrum of shared code from 0% to 100, 0% building, meaning you build everything native, natively. So you have Swift code, you have um, Java code, you have C Sharp code. In that sense, you get all that native experience, where on the other spectrum is 100% shared code. So you, get, you write this in JavaScript, you write this in CSS and HTML, and that's where kind of Cordova comes in. Everything in the middle, you have uh, React Native, which is kind of the latest hotness in Xamarin. It's kind of in the middle where you still write things in JavaScript, and you can still override those uh, looks and feels using the native, native uh, languages. But Cordova is 100% native, and that's kind of the goal or key of the framework. Sorry, it is 100% non-native. Oh, sorry, 100% non-native. Yeah, yes. and I think that's also an interesting point to talk about when you, when you ever consider the um, upsides and downsides of Cordova, because what we see constantly, as soon as you look up Cordova, um, what you see all the time is people using Cordova as a lazy tool, as in, I do not care about my application, therefore I'm just writing them in Cordova because it's easy. At the same time, it's important to consider that Cordova is a really good tool which enables you to use 
all these popular web frameworks that are out there. And if you happen to have a team which is already strong in a certain web framework, be that Angular, be that Ember, um, or React.js actually, um, if you already have a team that is very strong in those technologies, chances are you're going to write a better web application than you're going to write a good native application. Because good native code is pretty hard, especially once you have to maintain multiple applications. And um, yeah. yeah, and the difficulty of building natively um, is like the benefit of it is that you get the native experience. Like, the di all the different uh, platforms have this kind of different concepts. With Android, you have material design. You have an Apple and Windows phone is completely different. So you have the metro design in Windows and material design in Android and iOS. I don't know what you call it, the Apple design. Uh, so you have to code against these design paradigms individually. Plus, the tech stacks are completely different, which makes it really hard if you want to, if you have a quick and dirty web app that you just want to deploy natively. So you didn't have to learn all these tools, install all these tools. Cool. And so if you think Apache Cordova is kind of the right framework for you in building these native apps, then let's get started, right? <laughs> um, so first, we've got to install Apache Cordova, build an app, and then eventually make money and profit and become millionaires. Uh, so in order to install Apache Cordova, since it's such a since it's a multi-platform tool, that means you need to install all the native platforms. So that means you need to install the Apple SDK, you need to install the Android SDK, and the Windows Windows Phone SDK. Um, and in inclusive of all that is all the development tools that you need. So if you're running on all these different platforms, that means like Xcode, Eclipse, Visual Studio, or Vim, because I'm a Vim guy, I have to name drop that. Uh, and then all the subs, like all the external tools, like Apache Add and everything. And on top, once you've installed all these dependencies, you need to make them talk to each other. And, that's how, and how you usually do that is using environment variables. So you can do this if you want to, but this is kind of where Visual Studio Tools for Apache Cordova kind of comes in. So it packages all these dependencies all in one nice little box and boat and gives it to you as a present. So it kind of takes care of um, installing all these things and configuring all these things. So all you really need to care about is that you just need to install the MSI. And once it's finished, it'll install, and then you know that you can start coding away in Cordova. At this point, then we're going to just break and kind of show you code. Right. And I think uh, that's an important point to make one important statement, which some of you may not know. Visual Studio these days is free. Yeah. Right? It's, well, you might be thinking of no longer the community edition. Did you say community edition? Yeah. Good. OK. Because the important point here is that we always had a free version, which was kind of more like a super extended trial. The awesome thing about the Community Edition is that it supports all the plugins that are out there. You know, not just the Cordova tools, but also the Node.js tools and Python tools and whatever tools we have. Um, so everything we're showing you today is you know, totally possible with the free edition. Yep. So what I'm running today is just the, uh, you can use either use what's standard there, which is just Visual Studio 2013, which is what we shipped. But I just want to show you the latest and greatest, which is uh, the CTP, uh, the Community Technical Preview, I think is what the acronym stands for. Oops, let me open a new window. Yeah. So the tooling, the Apache Cordova tooling is available on um, both 2013 or 2015. So it already comes prepackaged in 2015 if you want it. If, so if you install, if you download and install the CTP, which is right now really free, um, it'll come prepackaged with the Cordova tools. Oh, jeez. This got murdered. Do you um, want to try some of the uh, more musical resolutions? <laughs> and bear with the sound? Yeah. Oops. Is anyone here in Hub Engineer can explain to me why a certain resolution makes a certain sound? Graphics <laughs> card's <laughs> working hard on? <laughs> no, it's not, it's, the, it's not your computer that's making the noise. It's the... So yeah, it's clearly the display. It's but the screen affecting the audio system. There you go. Yeah, hey. that, that sounds about yeah, right. I don't think it's the resolution. I think it's the birds. So on the projector, you're saying? Yeah. Anyhow, we're digressing. <laughs> we're digressing. <laughs> it works. Uh, is that better? No, no that looks about right. We're getting there. All right, so this is Visual Studio 2015 CTP. Um, so what we're going to do is just create a new Cordova project. What that really means is new project. And then once you install the Cordova tools on 2013, you'll get this new template called Apache Cordova Apps. Um, we're just going to create one. So I'll just name it. Uh, it is hot today. Coming from Seattle, I'm not very accustomed to this. Okay. Um, 
it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah, Microsoft, we're the least creative people out there. Okay, good name, good name. Can I hide all these things? This is kind of the entry point, you're like, you're like, welcome, you're all ready to build for all these three platforms. So a clarification is Apache Cordova actually supports way more than these three platforms. So it actually supports Android, iOS, big, uh, win Windows, big and small, so either Windows or Windows Phone, and a bunch of the other players which have kind of fallen off the map. So like BlackBerry, Palm OS, Fire OS, Tenzin. And it supports a wide array of uh, platforms. But for Visual Studio, we kind of just bucketed just the top three, which is Android, iOS, and Windows and Windows Phone. Oh yeah, and you might be wondering why we say three and then mention four things. Um, so Windows these days is essentially one giant platform. We have one common core. If you build an application for Windows, that application runs on um, pretty much every single flavor we have, including Xbox, including the teeny tiny servers, including the standalone stuff. Um, <coughs> if you build anything for Windows, it runs on anything that has a Microsoft logo. Yeah. So to be honest, this should be expanded to uh, also Xbox. Xbox. Yeah, Xbox. Yeah, which would be pretty cool. So how the project kind of looks like is, is really this. So this, we have a CSS folder, which, as you can imagine, should store all your CSS files. Um, images, merges, uh, resources, scripts, and index. So this is all just what you think of as HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Uh, right now, there's no framework in being used, but you can if you're very well. So if you have a background in Angular, if you have a background in Ember, you can very easily just put any JavaScript framework in here. Uh, so right now we just have this index.js, which is kind of your homepage, and it's you know just sourcing a bunch of scripts, which are here. So let's kind of uh, run it. Oh yeah, before you do that, I want to point out one thing, uh, which again might confuse some of you, but right next to the debug, you choose your platform, and because we're at Droidcom, we're choosing Android, um, so you can totally run and debug.